In this video, we're covering the installation of Insignia's second generation offset quadrant steam shower. Leveling the tray is literally the first step in the build of your shower and it's incredibly important this is done before anything else. To level the tray, push it into its final resting position, then use a spirit level and see where the bubble sits. If it sits in between the two lines, perfect. If not, what you need to do is to lift the tray up onto its side and change the elevation of the adjustable feet by either screwing them in or unscrewing them. Lock this new height into position by tightening the nuts on each feet you've changed and then push the tray back into its final resting position. Once again, use the spirit level and see how level your tray is now. Keep repeating this process until your tray is completely level. Once it is, you're ready to start the build. If you have a steam shower, use a drill and the drill bit provided to drill out the spigot in the side of the waste. This may have already been done, but it is always best to check. To fit the waste, take the chrome cap out and unscrew the inner part of the waste. Take the main body of the waste and the rubber seal and place it under the tray. Then screw the inner part of the waste in from above. For ease, lift the tray up onto its side so you aren't hampered by the floor. We advise to add plumber's mate around the inside edge of the waste to create a more watertight seal. To apply the rubber gum, firstly, open the rubber gum and trim off the required amount for the raised sections of the tray. You can use a knife, or if you find it easier, scissors. Place rubber gum face down on the raised sections, then remove the greaseproof paper and you're done. It's as easy as that. When connecting the framework, it's important to know which rail is which. The top rail is longer from top to bottom and the bottom rail is shorter. The top rail also has a square 90 degree edge, whilst the bottom rail has a curved 90 degree edge. On the bottom rail, the curved 90 degree edge faces down and sits in the tray. On the top rail, the square 90 degree edge also faces down. You have two upright profiles, with one wider than the other. The wider profile is for the curved side of the shower, and the thinner profile for the flat side. The cutouts you see in the profile signify that this is the end that sits in the tray. The cutout slightly overhangs the tray lip once fitted. Now you know which rail is which, simply slot the frame together and secure in place using the securing clips. Lift the framework and place into the tray. Please note the framework won't sit snug in the tray. There will be a five to 10 millimeter gap around it. This is allowed for water to escape and drain back into the tray through the allotted channels. Retrieve the riser rail from the accessories box and slide the chrome cap off by pushing upwards. Place the base of the riser rail through the hole in the back panel and secure with a large 15mm nut. Then, get a small nut and bolt and secure the top of the riser rail into position. Replace the chrome cap to complete the install. To fit the glass shelf, first retrieve one of the chrome finished shelf brackets. This will fit on the inside of the shower with a bolt and rubber washer. Screw the white threaded grub screw into the base of the chrome bracket. Do not screw it all the way in, just enough so it doesn't fall out. We will tighten this later when securing the glass shelf. Place the bolt through the bracket and place the rubber washer on the other side. 
now locate a second rubber washer, a metal washer and a nut. These go on the rear of the shower to secure the bracket in position. Now insert this through the hole in the back panel and place the rubber washer, metal washer then the nut on the rear of the panel to secure into position. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to tighten. Repeat this process for the other side. Now with both brackets fitted, slide the glass shelf into the brackets and tighten the white grub screw using a flat headed screwdriver. Next, fit the large back panel to the long side of the tray, aligning it to the framework and screw it together. There are pre-drilled holes in the framework for the connection and there are six screws to screw in place. Locate the column and lift it into position. Using the wing nuts, connect the column to the back panel. There are six connections to be made. Once you have connected the column, locate the remaining panel and lift it into position. Connect the back panel to the column using six wing nuts and then to the framework using six screws. To fit the front fixed glass, lift and place onto the inner ridge of the bottom rail and slide into the channel in the upright. Ensure you fit the glass tight into the framework. It's important to have two people to do this to ensure the glass is securely in the frame whilst you fix into position. To fix into position, take two PRC20 glass securing clips and screw one into the top rail and one into the bottom rail to secure the glass in place. Do this for both sides. The 7mm seal goes between the side profile and the curved fixed panel, whilst the 12mm seal goes between the side profile and the flat fixed panel. Fit the seals onto the inside of the shower using a firm flat surface to ease it in if required. In this video we've used a flat headed screwdriver. Lift the roof and place on top of the shower. Ensure it slots into the cutouts in the top of the framework. When screwing into position, use the drill bit to create a pilot hole if you wish. Secure all four screws into position. You do not need to secure the front of the roof, this will just sit on the framework. It's important not to over tighten the screws as this will cause the roof to spring up at the front. To fit the door stops, follow the orientation of the curve of the door stops as shown. Screw all door stops into position. To fit the door handles, simply unscrew the two small circular inner handles to separate the pieces. This will leave you with the main door handle body two round metal caps for the back of the body, four rubber washers and the threaded circular inner handles. You place a rubber washer on either side of the glass, the metal caps on the main body of the handle and then screw the inner circular handles to secure the door handle in place. The main handle should fit to the exterior of the door. Do this for both doors. There are two types of wheels in your pack, one spring loaded with a push button and one without. The wheels with the push button are for the bottom of the door and the wheels without for the top. On the back of the wheels there is a screw holding it all together. Remove this screw to reveal four parts. Your back plate, two rubber spacers and the main body of the wheel. To fit, place the body of the wheel and a rubber spacer on the outside of the door. 
with the other rubber spacer and the back plate on the inside of the door. Then secure all in place with the screw. To fit the doors, simply feed the top door wheels into the top rail and let the door hang in position. Then, press the push button on the bottom door wheels to pop them into the bottom rail. Do this for both doors and you should have an easy glide operation. If it is not gliding easily, double check all door wheels are in the channels and they have been fitted correctly. To fit the seals, simply push firmly onto the glass. The seals with the flap are for the rear of the door and the front fixed glass. The magnetic seals are for the doors. Push the seals onto the glass and shut the doors, ensuring the magnets meet. If they don't, use a Phillips screwdriver on the top door wheels and tighten or loosen to bring the magnets together. The magnets must overlap as shown in order for them to meet. With the water connections, the body jets are connected, but it is very important to check all Jubilee clips are tight as they're only connected for transportation purposes. You will have two rubber washers cable tied to the back of the valve. One is for the hand shower and one is for the overhead monsoon rain shower. Insert the washers into the brass threaded connectors and screw into the water feature. The shorter hose coming horizontally from the side of the valve is for the hand shower and the longer hose coming vertically from the top of the valve is for the monsoon rain shower. Tighten up with pump pliers until watertight. Do not over tighten. Check the Jubilee clips are in position over the hose and on the brass connections. Ensure they are tight and secure on both the hand shower and the monsoon rain shower. Locate the wires on the roof for the respective outputs and connect together by using the corresponding marking on the wires from the control panel. To connect the waste hose, simply screw it onto the waste outlet under the tray. Ensure that the rubber seal sits into the waste before screwing it up. Push the PVC hose onto the waste spigot and tighten in place using the Jubilee clip. When it comes to installing the electrics, full electrical bathroom compliance must be used in all situations. In this video, we have just plugged it into an extension lead for demonstration purposes only. If the light on your RCD isn't lit, press the button to reset the power. Now to remove any excess rubber gum from under the back panels, column or framework. Once the shower build is complete, you may notice some rubber gum protruding from these three items. To create a clean aesthetic finish, simply take a knife and make a cut down the edge closest to the panel, column or framework. Then simply pull away the excess, leaving you a neat and tidy finish. Use a sharp clean blade for a nice clean cut. Failure to do this may cause snagging on the rubber gum, leaving a rough, uneven finish. Push the shower back into its final resting position. Always push from the base, never from the glass or framework. For those with a platinum shower, insert your floor and stool. And that's our video. If there's any other how-to content you want to see, let us know in the comments section below. And to stay up to date with all of our video content, give us a subscribe.